Uh, sorry, I'm late. Good evening. Good evening. We have a quorum? We do. I guess we do, son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll call this meeting to order. Regular meeting of the Town Plan and Zoning Commission for Thursday, July 28th. First order of business will be uh, approval of minutes. I haven't, um, yeah, let me try that again. To entertain a motion for the approval of the June 28th meeting. No move. I'm sorry, June 23rd, not 28th. You have a second? Second. second. All right, move to second. Any corrections, omissions, additions? No, very thorough. Excellent. Good. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Chair votes aye. Make it unanimous. Moving on. Entertain a motion for approval of the June 30th. A special meeting, minutes of June 30th. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any corrections, additions, omissions? Um, Chair, should we say that it was a special meeting? It doesn't uh, seem to say that. Um, well, it was special. I don't. I don't think it matters. Okay. But either way, if, if someone would like to make that addition to the motion. No, I think it's fine. Yeah, they go on record, they go on record. And that's where we were, what we did. Okay. If you wish, uh, I could make it say special. That's not a problem. Okay. You want it? Why not? It was special. Yeah, I don't think, I don't okay. think we have to vote on that. But yeah, sure. Put it in, Joyce. Oh, okay. Thank you. No problem. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay, moving on. We have a series of public hearings. I'd rather go through this at every uh, public hearing. I'm going to make this statement once to cover all hearings. We'll conduct these in our usual fashion will be an application by the, uh, a presentation by the applicant, comments from the town planner, questions from the audience, questions from the commission, comments from the audience, comments from the commission, and one last shot to the applicant who wind it up. All right, <laughs> just a secretary, uh, 3A, special permit and plan application, Douglas Street Ventures, do you have the legal notice for that hearing? Yes. Um, notice is hereby given that the Town Planning and Zoning Commission conduct a public hearing and a meeting on July 28th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Petition by, by Jolly 2, comma, LLC for proposed zoning regulation text amendment pertaining to the signage requirements found in section 6.3. See, am I, I'm oh, reading, hold on. Uh, that, that's not 3A. If I may, uh, Jen Valentino Rodriguez for the record. I just wanted to mention that we do have a public hearing that was um, carried over from a previous meeting at which the legal notice was already heard. Um, so I don't know if you want to read through all of the legal notices or if you just want to hold off on this one and read each before they're up on the agenda. Um, but the first item on the agenda is the 59, um, 3A, I'm sorry, is 59 and 69 Douglas Street. Right. Yep. Um, okay, that's... That's not even on the legal notice. That was the one that was continued from last hearing, correct? Oh, okay. Yes, that's correct. So we have okay. to take it off the table. That's right, it was taken off. So, all right. 
Well, all right. Who is here for that application for Douglas Street, 59, uh, 5969 Douglas Street? Well, wait a minute. Peter DeMalley um, is here to present. There might be others. If there are others, you can raise your hand. Um, and he's been promoted to panelist. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Chairman Person and members of the uh, Plan and Zoning Commission, uh, Town Plan and Zoning Commission, TPZ. Um, I'm here on behalf of Doug Douglas Street Ventures, LLC, which is the applicant. Uh, we are before you on June 23rd, uh, your last, uh, not last meeting, second to last meeting. Uh, and we are, uh, at that time, we uh, presented our revised layout. We had gone from 55 trailer spaces with original plan down to 40 trailer spaces in May, and then down to 13 trailer spaces uh, that we presented at the last meeting. Uh, so we went from 59.85% impervious coverage down to 50% impervious coverage, which is in compliance, full compliance. We presented a robust landscape architectural plan and reviewed all planning, landscape architecture, civil traffic and architectural elements of the application. Uh, of course, the commission could not take action until the Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission acted uh, and which and they did so on July 18th, and they approved the application. Uh, we are here. Uh, I, could you kindly, uh, Jennifer, if you could kindly admit uh, Charlie Nyberg? Let's be Charlie on there. Um, I did, so he should be able to unmute. Okay, and, and share screen at that point. Yep. Also, uh, Mark Bertucci and Gina Di Pasquale, are they sure. on? Okay. From Fuss and O'Neill. Our client, Stephen Levesque of Douglas Street Ventures would be helpful as well. And that's particularly in, in the event the commission has any questions uh, of any of our design team members or of the applicant. So uh, with that, uh, Charlie Nyberg in particular is available to discuss a question that was posed by uh, Commissioner Blint last time with respect to uh, the um, efficiency of the building, such as its, uh, whether or not it's eco-friendly uh, and what, what mechanisms can be deployed, material options for reflective, uh, reflective roof, for example. Uh, so he's Charlie Nyberg from Shadler Cell now is available to uh, review that if you'd like. Uh, and uh, our, our, and our entire design team is available for any questions you do have any. I see Gina on. Yes, Gina. Hi, Gina. She did a great presentation on traffic last time, and Mark, and as well as Stephen Levesque, our client, uh, and uh, Charlie is via phone, looks like. Yes. There we go. Okay, so we're here. I don't, we don't believe it's, uh, it would be considering you have a long agenda. We were not planning on reviewing everything we did last time. Uh, we went into detail on stormwater drainage, on traffic, on uh, landscape architectural, a robust plan, which shows lots of pollinators, lots of additional trees and shrubs, uh, many of which are habitat for wildlife species, all kinds of species, as well as nesting sites um, and food sources. Uh, so we went through that in depth. Uh, Glenn Martin, who's here from our staff, uh, Daniel Jameson had gone through the civil engineering aspects of the plan. So we're available for questions should you have any. Uh, so uh, we turn it back to the chair as to how you'd like to proceed. Thank you, uh, Jennifer, any further comment? Sure, I'd be glad to uh, go through my report. It is largely unchanged, but um, I do have a couple of extra comments. So if you bear with me, I'll not give the description because the applicants already did that. Um, but I'll remind the commission that your section 4.4 industrial two district permits warehousing by special permit. And because this is a special permit application, the commission shall consider suitability for the site um, and will um, record any findings related to suitability and appropriateness of the use, lighting, noise, and traffic generated. And the zoning table that's on the um, Douglas Street Warehouse and Distribution Center revised sheet. Uh, again, it's been revised per staff comments and per feedback of the Inland Wetland and Watercourses Commission dated May 20th. Uh, the proposal meets the zoning regulations, bulk requirements for a lot size, 
dimension, setbacks, and height. And in their narrative, the applicant has requested special permit considerations for parking reduction, lighting height, and certain grading considerations and lot coverage. Those are allowed uh, as part of a special permit. The lot coverage percentages uh, noted in the zoning table in note two, um, I had a note there that those didn't match. I'm not sure if the applicant could just clarify and maybe um, just revise the plan prior to filing or if maybe I misread that. Um, I, so I'll just mention again, the lot coverage percentages, the notation was, um, it just seemed to be different in the zoning table than it was on note uh, two, which is on sheet CT1. So that's just something, it's just a housekeeping matter to check up on. Uh, the parking table is provided on sheet one of the plan set, indicating that the applicant's proposal complies with the regulations and proposes 108 spaces and per section 6.2 H1E of your uh, zoning regulations, a special permit request is being made for the permanent reduction of parking spaces by 35%. And the associated parking calculation is below the zoning data table on sheet one. Um, I don't know if you have any further questions for the applicant. They did make some changes to the number of parking spaces that were proposed, uh, most notably in the southern part of the property where the tractor trailer parking was. Um, the application submittal did include some simple building elevations on sheet A201. And the commission may wanna have a discussion with the applicant about the type of building that will be constructed or ask to see materials or color rendering. Um, and as the applicant mentioned, um, Commissioner Blint did ask about um, even the roof and coloring there for environmental purposes. So it's great that that was considered. Uh, regarding lighting, the applicant provided compliant lighting fixtures and levels on the lighting plan, that's sheet CLT1, as well as fixture locations for commission review. And the legend for lighting didn't include um, building mounted lighting and the symbols didn't seem to line up with what was on um, the layout sheet in the legend. So again, housekeeping, if those could just be consistent prior to file, uh, filing the final plans. <clears throat> uh, the you, landscaping. Jenna. Oh, sure. Uh, I... <laughs> long, long pause, you caught me. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to take a breath. Yeah, well, uh, regarding the, the, the landscape, I'll have to do a lot of that tonight. Uh, the landscaping, as a developer uh, mentioned, and I do agree, is robust and has been very responsive to the Wetland Commission. And so those um, landscaping items have been incorporated in the plan uh, for, the, um, for your review. And then I did mention over on the um, north side where the buffer is, in particular, the residential use to the north, uh, consider whether the proposal will provide sufficient year-round screening. And sometimes when you have evergreens, when they grow taller, you see more tree trunk than you do uh, a dense screening. And so um, I did have a conversation with the applicant and then they said that the type that were provided, although they're not dense arborvitae, don't tend to lose their lower branches. Uh, so that's something that if the commission wanted to ask about that a little bit more, you could, uh, just knowing that there's a residential use there. Um, you do wanna consider whether the screening would be year round um, certainly, I would think trees are more attractive than a fence, um, but you have a, a neighbor um, there to consider. And so um, those are just my thoughts. Regarding signs, the applicant hasn't provided any sign information. And uh, that's something that the commission may want to indicate as part of the motion, whether the, um, the applicant should return to the commission or whether staff can review the signs um, when they have a tenant. And um, finally, uh, the Wetland Commission, as the developer mentioned and applicant mentioned, um, has approved their plan. And so the Town Plan and Zoning Commission can now move forward with uh, taking action. Fire marshal comments, um, there were only some suggestions to consider talking to the fire department about the roadway width and perhaps having to widen it um, prior to issuance of building permits. Um, but I don't have any official comments from the fire marshal of that particular district. I guess there was a retirement. Um, so the comments I got were from uh, the fire marshal in um, the other district. So 
And then I do list here a possible motion and some consider um, some conditions that the commission will want to consider if you decide to take action this evening. And I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Is there anyone in the audience who has a question? Questions only from the audience. I don't see any. No, neither do I. No, I guess not. All right, moving on. Questions from the commission. Mr. Millett, I've got you up first on the screen. I don't have any questions this time. Well, incidentally, well, we, before we move on a little bit of business, we're now eight in the number. So that means uh, one alternate has to sit down. We'll not vote on this. Are you the I'll only alternate, down. Katie? I am Is the only on? alternate tonight, yes. Okay. Uh, no, Michael Oliver's here. I'm an alternate. Oh, I'll yeah. Sit down. Yep. And then Kate. Who sat on the last one? Who was uh, the last I did. One? So that would be Kate can have her turn. So Kate, okay. Thank Moving you. on. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Lester, any questions? Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mara, any questions? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Oliver, any questions? No questions. Thank you. Wait, oh, wait a minute. You're, no, well, you're entitled to ask questions. Ms. No questions. Thank you. You, you, can't, you can't vote, but <laughs> Ms. Blint. Um, I just wanted to find out if there were more details on the um, eco-friendly mechanisms. C certainly. Uh, what I suggest we do is that has been reviewed after Commissioner Blint uh, requested at the June meeting. Uh, we reviewed that with Mr. Levesque and Charlie Nyberg from Shell Now Seller Associates is available, and uh, he were Shadler Seller, excuse me, uh, and he is available to just review some of the options. But that that will be decided at the time when we finally get our final tenant identified. So, Mr. Nyberg, just a brief, brief outline. Yeah, yeah, he can tell you what the options are, and of course, it has a lot to do with whether or not they decide to do solar on the roof. Uh, but Charlie? So I'm unmuted. Can, I, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Charles Nyberg, Shadler Cell Now, 5 Waterville Road in Farmington. Uh, again, as I stated at the first hearing, uh, at this point, there is no uh, end user that has uh, been selected by Mr. Levesque to occupy or go forward with the building. Uh, at this point, seeking site plan approval will allow him to start marketing the site for an end user. Uh, the eco-friendly aspects of the building will follow as far as energy conservation goes, will have to follow the uh, state and federal building code with respect to energy conservation. There's very specific ratings and R values that will have to be met for the walls and the roof construction. Uh, they're very stringent in terms of insulation. Obviously, things are getting more expensive and will never be cheaper than they are now. So it's up to the end user to select a, a system that will provide con, uh, con, uh, acceptance to the uh, energy codes, uh, as well as the use of the building. Uh, colors, again, as I stated, I think at the first hearing, uh, have not been selected because we do not have an end user. Understood. It may be a corporate, maybe a corporate company that would have its own series of colors. Uh, Mr. Levesque's other business provides a wealth of different panel systems uh, that are available for buildings such as this that meet the energy requirements. So as far as energy goes, the building will comply with the most stringent codes that the state has in place. I know last time the question about the roof was asked as to whether or not it was going to be a uh, reflective or absorptive roof. Again, that is going to depend on the type of construction for the building. Uh, currently what is available in terms of a building, perhaps not exactly like this, but a white reflective membrane surface the days of the old built up roof are gone. We now have single ply 60 mil 
membrane roofing systems. They do go with a black, but again, we're not looking to do that. I think an end user would not be looking to do something like that. So if it was a EPDM style roof with a membrane, it would be probably a 60 mil minimal, minimum with a reflective surface. It could very well also be a metal roof, depending upon the type of construction that's employed. And that again would be a reflective surface, not a absorptive surface. So again, trying to be eco-friendly. The other thing that might happen with this, again, with an end user, is that we do have a reasonable amount of roof area that could also be devoted to solar panels uh, in terms of using that roof surface for uh, some energy uh, uh, relief in terms of electricity. So I don't know if I've answered your question. It's certainly another style of roof would be what we would call a green roof, which mm -hmm. is planted. Uh, we don't see something like that on this building. This is an industrial type of application. I think more of a, I'm not sure what style building, but certainly not in this case. So I don't know if I've answered your question, but those are my comments and I would be happy to continue to try to assist you in your, in your request. I think that answers the question. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Ms. Adams, any questions? Yes, sorry, technical difficulties, I'm on. Um, Jennifer, I know you were saying something about the, the fire marshal portion of this, uh, of these plans as far as the parking and all of that. At what point does it have to be signed off by the fire marshal? Uh, so often if the if the fire marshal still wants to work with the applicant, um, you can, as the commission, make a condition as part of the motion that the applicant work with the developer to provide a satisfactory design prior to um, filing of the plans, or you could do filing um, or issuance of building permits. So that's a that's a way to handle it. And again, they were they were just recommendations by the uh, fire marshal of the other district in the absence of the um, fire marshal for that particular di district. Right. Okay. Thank you. That's my question. Yeah. Mr. Shane, any questions? Kevin, you muted. Sorry. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on that same question that Jennifer mentioned about the um, fire marshal concerns, is was there a turn in radius for the fire truck for the northern entry part of the lot? Was that one of that done? <clears throat> to the design engineer or whoever the, yeah. the, the yes, yeah, we did. is that something that you can answer? Okay, yes. great. We, we did check the training radius on that and it's adequate. For it's adequate for one of the fire trucks to um, enter. And obviously the other ones look pretty good. I'm not too worried about the other ones, but that Northern, that Northern entry looks a little tight. So. Yeah. And it's, it's only for the entry of vehicles. It's not for exit as well. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. My, my only thing that I had, and I apologize, I missed the last meeting. So I missed the presentation, but based on the minutes, it looks like it was a really good presentation. Mm -hmm. Um, on the northwest corner, um, where the outfall is with the concrete headwall, that um, that outfall into that town of Bluefield property number twenty two, which is cross twenty two number twenty two cross street. Yes, I don't know if you guys took a walk out there, Jennifer. I don't know if you were able to get out there, but I know there's it. It, it, it everything drains that way, but there's really not a really good clear path or delineated swale per se it's almost like it's oh, i only walked it because i did a walk with uh the inland wetlands commission i'm concerned that that may potentially cause some issues on the town property and potentially creating some head head for you guys there because i saw we saw a lot of tree trunks we saw a lot of down debris and there was a lot of stuff there and there's really not um define swale per se to handle your outfall. And I know that's a 24 inch outfall there going through by the riprap. I would say that Jennifer maybe can walk out there with, I know it's the town property, but it will cause issues on your property because it is downhill. So 
I don't know if you were able to take a look at that and maybe later coordinate with the town to see if you can walk that area to help with that, with that any drainage outfall issues you may have. If, if I may respond to that, Mr. Chairman. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, yes, we had a series of meetings with town staff uh, that was uh, with um, uh, Jonathan Tessie, uh, Sarah Cody, uh, Peter Castaldi, uh, Jen even participated in meetings as well. Um, series of meetings with respect to all the storm drainage, and including the recommendation of the town engineer was to take this approach to discharge at that one point Northwest corner and to go across the property. And he was convinced that it would not be a problem with respect to stormwater drainage and erosion stuff. But what I'd like to do is turn it over to our project manager and and licensed professional engineer on this, uh, Mr. Daniel Jamison uh, from Design Professionals who can address that more specifically. If I may, you'll be joining us one second. Daniel. Hello, members of the commission. For the record, Daniel Jamison, project manager of Design Professionals and professional engineer in the state of Connecticut. And uh, yes, Mr. Hussein, to answer your question, we did design a preformed scour pad at that outlet, <laughs> and uh, we did um, ensure that we met, uh, you know, two-year, ten-year, and twenty-five-year storm conditions. Um, to end our discussion with town engineer uh, Johnson Tessie and uh, uh, Sarah Cote, uh, we did um, to decide that in uh, lieu of digging a deeper basin, that we could raise the bottom elevation up um, to, and with that, we are going to yeah, increase the uh, fifteen hundred-year storms, but. You know, the erosive potential storms, the two and the 10, uh, we did match those peak flows. And then with that preformed scour hole, we are, um, that's designed to spread that flow out and further reduce the velocity going across that area. Um, and um, I also did walk that back property. Um, it does, it is a very gradual area. It is a lot of forest leaf litter and stuff there. Um, I don't see that it is an inc incision occurring now. And with our spread out preformed scour hole, we had, we are going to spread. It's not going to be point source. I mean, technically it is point source, but with the preformed scour hole, it will be about to spread over a good, um, I believe, over 15 feet of area to um, then uh, waterfall on and or flow over the town's property um, onto the, the stream that um, crosses the town's property um, to finally make it there. Mm -hmm. All right, great. And then the other quick, I'm glad you guys did that too. So that area though, you had, was that a storm scepter you had there? Are you putting in like a storm scepter there or no? Yes. So um, since we weren't uh, going to have a wet pool bottom, uh, we are doing hydrodynamic separators. So all pavement surfaces from the standard parking lot areas, trailer connector drive and trailer parking areas will all be treated um, by okay. storm scepters. Great. Because if it's going to flow into the town property, we want to make sure our property is has pretty good quality storm outfall. So that's all I have for now, um, um, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Okay, moving on, any comments from the audience? Yeah, I don't see anyone with a hand up. Okay, comments from the commission. Let's start at the other end. Mr. Hussain, any comment? I'm all set. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, hey, Ms. Adams, any comments? You're muted. Sorry, good, jo good, <laughs> good job. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as we move on up here, Mr. Mara, any comments? Uh, with leave, if I can just ask one question, I forgot to ask. Uh, sure. Go ahead. It's, uh, it's about the sign. I know you haven't uh, moved for uh, a sign or um, indicated a sign in your proposal, but do you have any thoughts about what kind of sign you'd be looking for to determine whether or not you'd have to come back and make an application or we could just direct it to staff? Oh, we don't have a strong preference. I mean, we would prefer to deal with staff on that, of course, um, simple, simplify it. However, um, we, d we do not have any indication so far of what a prospective tenant might want for signage. So we didn't want to get into that at this juncture, but we thought it would be more appropriate once we have identified, uh, Mr. Levesque has identified a, a future tenant for this and they have their own preferences. They'll know what, what they want to do with respect to building mounted or, or ground mounted uh, signage. Uh, and then we'll come back colors and all but size and all that type of stuff. So we, we don't have any indication from any tenant at prospective tenant this time. So we prefer to return to you on that. Uh, and, uh, and, and if you're comfortable with it, go through town staff. 
if you want to kick it up back to the commission, that's fine. Okay, thank you. It's a good presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Myra. Ms. Blint, I skipped over you. Any comment? No comments, sir. Okay, Mr. Lester, any comments? Uh, no comments, Mr. Chair. Mr. Millett? Uh, no comments. Okay, and the chair has no comments. At this point, we'll turn it back to the applicant for one last, I'm sorry, did someone? Okay, Mr. back to the applicant for one last uh, wrap up. Yes, yeah, so we, um, we've had a, we applied in February to the town, uh, the initial applications. Um, I knew you were very patient and thank you very much for as we went through the um, Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission process. Uh, which was a good process. Uh, of course, they've approved the application. Uh, we believe it's an appropriate use for the site. Uh, the site is nine acres in size, and is certainly large enough to support this particular development. Uh, the applicant has agreed um, after hearing testimony from wetlands and also from the TPZ uh, and town staff uh, re to reduce uh, the project scope at this time. Uh, so we went from 55 trailer spaces to 40 and now down to 13. We fully recognize and be cognizant of the fact that he will have to return to this commission and also the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission if we wish to increase the number of trailer spaces or increase the number of parking spaces, that type of thing. We have certainly plenty of room to do that, but he would have to return. So we're very comfortable in doing that. Uh, and he also, he and his wife also authorized us to do, uh, as Jen mentioned, the robust uh, landscape architectural plan. Uh, and it, it really is one of the most aggressive that I've seen. Uh, and it does meet with what the Levesque's want, which is they wanted to have lots of, uh, of uh, pollinators. They, they're into that. Um, they like the natural environment. They wanted to have lots of plants that were available for nesting sites, for, um, uh, for um, uh, shelter, and for uh, food sources for a wide, wide variety of wildlife. Um, so we're, uh, we're cognizant of the fact that we're developing the property as per the zoning regulations, uh, but we're in the plan of conservation development, but we're also uh, want to make good neighbors. Uh, we've got plenty of landscaping to, to buffer um, any neighbors uh, and also to be um, uh, good, good to the natural environment. So we think we have a good plan here. Uh, we think it's marketable. Uh, and with, if you were to choose to uh, approve this application, uh, then Mr. Levesque can start marketing it uh, to prospective tenants. And as you know, he, he owns a, a existing uh, industrial business right around the corner, Total Wall Systems in, uh, in Bloomfield and has for many years and he's a, good, he's a good neighbor and a good member of the business community. So with that, our team is here for any further questions and we'd, uh, we look forward to hearing your decision. I think we're beyond that at this point. We would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I wouldn't expect any cheer votes aye. We're back on the agenda to consider the question of the uh, special permit on <coughs> site plan application uh, for 5960 Douglas Street. I'm sorry, 5969. Could be an even and odd. We've had enough of those in town. Uh, entertain a motion at this point to for approval and for the discussion. I'll make a motion to approve the special permit and site plan application of Douglas Street Ventures, comma LLC for approval to construct the 74,520 square feet warehouse slash distribution center with associated loading docks and parking. Parking Property will be located at 59 and 69 Douglas Street in the I-2 zone. Owners, Douglas Street Ventures, comma, LLC, uh, dated in the uh, I don't have the original date on there. Oh, received dated in February 28th, 2022. Anything about the fire marshal's approvals? If I may, uh, Chair Verson, yes. Jen Valentino Rodriguez, for the record. Um, in my report, I do have uh, possible motions and conditions. Uh, so the, the start is there as the commissioner read, um, but then I also have other conditions to be met prior to the issuance of permits. 
and um, prior to issuance of certificate of occupancy, as well as general conditions. So you could always just, um, if someone wanted to add the motion to refer to my uh, report, which is dated July 24th. Oh, okay. July 24th is the most uh, recent. And, and, then, and also, okay, I would like to include all the comments in uh, planner Jennifer Valentino's memo dated July 24th. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. We have a second. Second, Commissioner Adams. Thank you. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Chair votes aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Outstanding. Very, very excited. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Moving on, item 3B, special permit application for the RSR plant. Uh, Mr. Lester, do you have a legal notice for that? So we actually, um, if I may, we got a request from the applicant that they'd like to table uh, to the, the August meeting. I don't know if anyone's here attending that wanted to speak to that, but um, we did get something emailed to us with a request to table it. Okay, would entertain a motion to table item 3B? So moved. Second. Seconded. Uh, yep. Any discussion? Second. Moved by Adams. Seconded Pardon by me. Lester. Okay. okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Mr. Oliver, you're muted. He's not voting, Mr. Chair. Remember, it's Katie. Well, that's true. He's not voting in this one. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, chair votes aye. So we'll table it for the, I assume, the next meeting. Moving on, item 3C, petition by Jolly 2, uh, regulation to the text amendment. Uh, Mr. Lester. Okay. Uh, legal notice published in the Hartford Current on July 15th and July 22nd. Notice is hereby given that the Town Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing at a meeting on July 28th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Petition by Jolly 2, comma, LLC for a proposed zoning regulation, zoning regulation text amendment pertaining to the signage requirements found in section 6.3. Okay, who's here to make that application? Looks like Dave Zyax is here. I tried to move to panelists. Oh, there we go. It worked. Yeah. Mr. Zyax, yes. You're muted, sir. Mr. Zyax, you're still muted. Here we are. There you go. I got lots of things flashing on my screen here right now. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission. My name is Dave Zayax. I'm with F.A. Hesketh Associates. And uh, this evening, I'm representing uh, the applicant. Uh, Brian Zellman, I believe, is uh, going to join us uh, via the internet, in case you have any questions of the applicant. Um, we have been discussing uh, some potential uh, changes to Section 6.3, which is the signage regulations. Uh, in the zoning regs. Um, actually, uh, over the years, um, I've had uh, numerous landowners and uh, clients uh, discuss uh, the idea of the opportunity to uh, install uh, directional uh, and informational signs regarding their businesses, properties, et cetera, uh, in an off-premise type of situation. We have a number of situations around town where um, 
businesses, um, in this case, residential developments are, um, they're on uh, the collector and arterial streets around town, uh, but they're not, they don't front on them. They're not, they, or, they're, or, they're, or they're, their property doesn't front on those streets, um, but they, the streets provide the access to those facilities. And um, the idea of uh, having an opportunity to put uh, a directional or informational sign for those uh, facilities, you know, out at the main street. So as uh, the, uh, the public is traversing uh, these larger roads, uh, they would be able to see these signs and, and, and see them as a directional uh, sign to um, you know, the site that they're looking for. Um, right now, your regulations allow off-premise directional signs, but only for governmental purposes. Um, there's been some discussion over the years, well, how did the one, how did, how did this type of sign get installed on Granby Street uh, for the industrial park, uh, you know, south of uh, Cottage Grove Road, such as Home Depot and things of that nature? And um, with the changes in staff over the years and things of that nature, I don't think anybody really knows how that happened, whether it was by ZBA or otherwise. Uh, I, I should have said the chairman probably knows because he's been here longer than I have. So uh, uh, that was it. actually that was an application by the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there you go. I finally have an answer. Um, but anyhow, uh, looking at this application this evening, what we did was we didn't want to, you know, completely reinvent the wheel here and, and really cause lots of confusion. So we we worked with staff back and forth uh, over the spring uh, and into the summer. Uh, to try to come up with, I think, a pretty straightforward way to deal with this. Um, and uh, basically, if we look into uh, the recommended uh, text amendments we have, which, which are all part of really uh, section 6.3 BE, and if I can share the screen, I can just bring up um, see here. There we go. I hope folks, you can see that. Um, that's what uh, the, the text uh, language that we proposed. And basically what happens is it revises the, the uh, in, in 6.3BE, it, it revised the first paragraph A. It says, off-premises directional and informational signs shall be permitted for governmental uses or as otherwise approved by the commission by a special permit. So that would open it up to uh, other uses other than governmental uses. Then uh, in, your, in your paragraph B, we would uh, recommend uh, all signs except identification and directional signs for municipal facilities and municipal signs for central directional indexing in industrial areas shall be erected inside property lines. So the, the sign has to be on a, a lot. It can't be in the right of way. Um, and then C would add a subsection, uh, subsection D4, is that off-premise uh, premises freestanding directional information signs may be permitted on separate parcels for situations where the business or the residential use to which they pertain is not visible from the collector or arterial street you know, as designated by the Department of Transportation, that that little uh, sentence was put in a request of the town engineer, so that there's no confusion as to what a collector or an arterial street is. Those are listed by the Connecticut Department of Transportation, so uh, there's no second guessing that. Uh, and then some subsections: off-premises signs must conform to Section 6.3, so it, the sign must already it must conform to your existing Section 6.3 as far as you know, uh, all the technical specifications for that. Uh, signs may be allowed only on separate parcels with frontage on the collector and arterial street. Again, that was the suggestion of your town engineer. So um, you know, both, both the, uh, the, the facility and, uh, and the sign have to be uh, related to a collector or arterial street. We don't want these signs on all the local streets around town and things of that nature. This is really geared towards you know, the busy streets um, and drawing the attention of drivers on those streets. 
uh, only one sign would be permitted for any parcel. So uh, if you had a, uh, a parcel on the corner on an arterial street, it can't have you know, five different uh, directional informational signs on it. It can only have one. Uh, and then you have to provide written evidence to the commission that um, uh, you have an executed easement or other mechanism to put the sign on that separate parcel. So you can't come to the commission and get a sign approved on someone, on someone else's parcel that you don't have any uh, ability to put the sign on. Uh, and then um, the sec to add to section 6.3H um, off premise signs, there's uh, only one sign shall, uh, shall now exceed 32 square feet of sign area per, fa per face and cannot be taller than 10 feet. Um, and, uh, and then basically we're just adding uh, off-premise signs to 6.3L, which is that technical specification. Now, um, I saw a, uh, a Jennifer, uh, your director of building and land use, um, reviewed this uh, request as it relates to the plan of conservation and development. And um, we agree, we don't see that this is a conflict with the goals. There's actually a goal on page 47 of the document that talks about you know, seeking to continue to promote beautification and wayfinding um, so that uh, the notion of, of, of promoting wayfinding uh, within the community uh, to, um, you know, to provide better direction for these types of facilities that are on these busy roads, but you really can't see them, really can't find them. You know, you can argue why well, we have GPS today and all that kind of stuff, but, um, you know, not everyone relies on that. and. Uh, Sometimes that's not as accurate as everybody wishes it would be. Um, so uh, that's why the idea of having a, an actual physical sign is still, I think, relevant today. Um, the staff went on to, to suggest uh, an amendment to our proposal, which would be that uh, possibly this left up to the commission to decide whether these types of signs should go to your new design review board for review for, um, you know, architectural and, and, and other uh, is, uh, issues that the uh, design Revo review board um, takes on as part of the town's process and, uh, you know, as part of the uh, application to the planning and zoning commission. And I would leave that up to you folks to decide whether you wanted to go to that extra step or not. Um, so basically that's, that's the uh, idea. Um, the other thing, just to give you an idea, Let me see if I can get this. Yeah. So for this res for this applicant, which is the developers of the Washbrook apartments that are now being built, you know, at the north end of Jolly Drive. Um, obviously, Jolly Drive uh, comes out at a major intersection um, at, on Cottage Grove Road where uh, there's multiple medical uses um, on the south side. And now on the north side, which was the old Sid Miller appliance store, has been converted to uh, one of the uh, Hartford Hospital's, um, you know, major um, off-campus buildings there on the corner, uh, which uh, this, the builders of uh, Washbrook, they were the um, developers of that as well. And so what they did was um, thinking way ahead is they actually already reserved an easement on the corner there of Cottage Grove Road on that property in the event that they could put a, a, one of these signs up in the future. So uh, that's in place, but um, they would like to put in a, a sign similar to this. This is obviously an artist sketch, but this is the kind of signs we're talking about. Uh, this sign would be roughly five feet by uh, just under nine feet and would be uh, you know, on the corner uh, where that building is located, directing you down Jolly Drive to um, where Washbrook will be located once it's completed. So uh, that's, the, that's, the, that's the kind of a project that we're looking at, you know, the kind of situation where the, those apartments are, are way at the end of Jolly Drive and uh, really cannot be seen from Cottage Grove Road or any other arterial road, you know, in town. So the idea would be to put up a, an attractive sign such as this, um, just to try to tie it in more with the rest of the community. And uh, for folks who are traveling along Cottage Grove Road, 
would easily be the, then be able to figure out, you know, uh, how to find Charlie Drive and get down to the uh, apartments uh, facility successfully. So again, the, the idea was to not create a whole new ball game here, but to to take to, to, to use the existing regulations that are already spelled out in section 6.3. And, and really what we're doing is adding the idea that uh, you could do these uh, off-premise directional and informational signs for uses other than just uh, governmental uses. But in working with staff, we've tried to put as many controls into uh, this process so that we don't have these signs everywhere around town and certainly on more local streets uh, in, in residential neighborhoods and things of that nature. Uh, these are geared towards the few collector and arterial roads that are in the town. And at this point, I'd be happy to you know, answer any questions or continue the, the dialogue on, on the uh, proposal. Thank you, Mr. Zaks. Jennifer, any uh, comments? I do, and the applicant has already uh, mentioned a few things on the report, so I won't go through everything. I don't want to be redundant, and we have a lot to do tonight, but there are a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, some of them are procedural, because uh, often your applications are related to the site design, and in this sense, you're um, reviewing a text amendment. So the Connecticut General Statute, Section 8-3, governs regulatory changes for municipalities. In making its decision, the commission shall take into consideration the plan of conservation and development prepared pursuant to section 8-23 and shall state on the record its findings on consistency of the proposed change. So that's something you'll want to um, get on the record before you take action uh, this evening. And as the developer mentioned, I did um, notice that on section or on page 47, the uh, Bloomfield Plan of Conservation and Development seeks to continue to promote beautification and wayfinding. And um, I did recommend that the commission consider requiring sign applications such as this to first go to the design review board for review and recommendations so that off-premises signs over time become part of a community-wide program of wayfinding and increase a sense of place and to minimize any negative Im impacts of the additional signs. Uh, back to procedure, um, zoning regulations will become effective at such time as is fixed by the commission. So that's a date that you'll want to state tonight on the record if you take action and approve. And notice that the decision needs to be published in a paper, um, newspaper 15 days before the effective date. So um, just giving staff time to put that in the paper uh, before you pick your effective date. So at least 15 days. And then my final uh, comment at the bottom was just to suggest adding one line to what the applicant has proposed. And again, that's related to the design review board. And it's an addition of all such sign proposals shall be referred to the design review board for review and comment prior to submitting an application to the Town Plan and Zoning Commission. And so those are all of my comments. Thank you, Jennifer. Any questions from the audience? I wouldn't have anticipated too many. I don't see any hands raised. All right, all right back to the commission. Mr. Millett, any questions? Uh, just on the recommendation for the Design Review Board, would they um, would they work in that particular location or uh, just, I know typically they're doing work in the business center district and possibly the gateway. I don't know if they've, they're working in the cottage grove. Would they apply to all, all around town? Yeah, so their charge does focus on the center, but it also um, is open to um, applications being referred to them in the community in general. So it can okay. be for, it can be anywhere. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mr. Mayor. I have a, a question on the language in um, C, uh, 6.3 C, or your proposal, sorry. Uh, it's paragraph C, 
uh, subparagraph little c, where you say only one sign is permitted for each separate parcel. Um, which parcel are you referring to there? Is it the, the applicant parcel or the parcel that's going to be burdened by the sign? Oh, it would, it would definitely be the burden parcel. The applicants, so, the applicants' signs are are already uh, regulated by your by your you know for parcel signs. If there's a sign down at the parcel, but that's a, a sign that's already regulated. We're not proposing to change that. So, um, wordsmithing C. It, the intent is is that you know if we put this say if we put this sign for instance out at the Hartford Hospital site. Har Harford Healthcare site, there's only going to be one sign there. So no one else can put a sign on that property. Okay, but Hartford Healthcare has a sign on that property already. It, it does for them, yeah. yeah. So that property could have two signs. Yeah, I don't know if we want to say only uh, one, uh, one off-premises sign is permitted. Maybe that's the right way to say it. Only one off-premises directional and an informational sign is permitted on each separate parcel. And is there any limitation on how many of these off-premises signs the burden, I mean, the applicant parcel could have? So well, that's an, one yeah, that's an interesting question. I, the answer is no right now, I don't think, yes. Okay. Um, well, he, would, he would probably- I mean, if you, if you wanted to do it, if you wanted to do it on, on both sides of the street, or something, yeah. The, the owner sign would be limited by the uh, area, the sign area requirements for the site, I think. Uh, and my point is you could have, like for your, your development, you could have one on Jolly Drive. And then if you decided you need more directional, you know, pointing, you could have one, you know, half a mile away to direct them toward Jolly Drive. Right. Um, well, that's not that's not the intent. So, uh, um, where do we put that? Let's let's think about that. So, only only one off. So, if we reword C sub C to be only one off premises directional and informational sign is permitted on each separate parcel. For each separate parcel. Yeah. All right. Well, I hey, should talk. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, and Dan, I think my, my, my good point, but then what happens if the parcels are a button? I think we should also put a minimum distance also to that because we don't want to have directional signs that are 50 feet apart because they're separate parcels, right? Should we also add a minimum too? Because then we can have, if we have three parcels that are within that, I'm just saying hundred feet, technically they can all each have a sign, right? Not that it would matter, not that you would do it, but to prevent it, I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. That's that's the next point I was going to get at is <laughs> backing at these signs. Right. Um, so I, I like the idea, but I'm troubled by the, that little detail. Yeah. I, would well, wonder I if... think. You, you, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Okay. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say. I think. I think, uh, Mr. Mara's first comment, I think, could be solved by rewording C to be. Uh, only one off-premises directional and informational sign is permitted for each parcel. So then the, the next issue is, um, you know, should there be uh, some separate, uh, fixed separating, minimum separating distance? So the event that somebody doesn't want to put three of them in a row, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, driving down 95, you know, next stop is Al's Diner, you know, 73 miles from here and then 72 miles and then 71 miles, you know, uh, I, that kind of a situation. So, uh, or maybe I mean, a quarter mile apart, minimum, maximum. No, no, minimum because we don't want it, we want it less than a quarter mile apart. We don't want anything. Oh, well, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, right. right. Is a quarter too much or too little? I mean, do you have to yeah, look I mean, at one I mean, my, like my way of thinking it was always that there was just one sign permitted for the facility. So if we say there's one sign off premises sign permitted per applicant, 
and one off-premises sign per burdened parcel. Mm. That, would yeah. keep, that would keep one development, one unified development from stacking signs. Right. The next thing you get at is if you have my business in that development, and then we have your business next door to me in that development, do we get two signs for that building that you can't see from the arterial? Huh. I mean, I, you know, I, I have the vision of the, of the uh, sign on Cottage Grove Road down where the industrial park is where everybody's on one side. And I'm perfectly fine with that, that, that concept, but I'm not sure that this, wording leads us to that sort of a concept. Mm -hmm. It doesn't at this point, as far as, yeah. It's, so I like the idea, but I, I think the wording is a little open that it could be have, you know, two, three, four right in a row, as uh, Commissioner Hussein was saying, or you could have a whole bunch of signs for a industrial or business development that isn't on an arterial road. Like I was thinking along the same lines. You'd have, if you had an apartment complex next to the present complex, uh, could they go on and put their name on the same sign? Yeah, so at this point, the way that the way the regulation is written or the draft, you know, uh, if if Jolly if Washburg puts a sign at that location we were just talking about, just as an example, and for some reason uh, another facility down that street, be it another medical building or a hypothetical another residence, um, they th they could not put another sign on that Hartford Healthcare site with this regulation themselves. Okay. There couldn't be there couldn't be two physical signs. The question I think at this point is. Could they could they each go on the same sign? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Now they could, you know, in theory, if we wanted to open it to that, you could say yes. But um, they'd all have to fit in the thirty-two square feet at this point, because that uh, working with staff, that's sort of the number we've come up with that seems to be reasonable, so that the sign's not a large, you know obnoxious sign it's 32 feet square which is rough which is roughly uh five by six you know sort of five five and inches by six feet so the question is how many uses could you put on a five by six sign that would want to go together yeah. in practice i think that would be a tough negotiation right second person <laughs> trying to get onto the sign but mr uh, meyer is very aware of, i know mean, he's aware of those kinds of negotiations so uh, um, um Oh, Mr. Chair, since the, we're going to have to make a recommendation anyway for it to add it, the design has to has to go in front of the design review board. Would it be harsh to just have them, Mr. Zayek, present to the design review board, work out the language, and then present it back to us with the new language? So then that all of this is sorted out already. That's sort of sweeping it under the rug. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it has yeah, to go to them anyway, right? Why don't they just go? And I must admit, I am part of the design review board. So I would see it anyway, both times. So I don't know if because it will have them work out the language and then present it back to us. That would make sense to me. We can discuss that, I guess, during the, when we get down to the motion stage. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah, the th only thing I would suggest is that, you know, um, if, you, if, you, if you choose to go that route, just leave the hearing open. We, we can work with them if necessary, if, you, if, the, if that's the wishes of the commission and come back with a modified language well, under, I, this app, under this application. Well, I, I, I would think that what Mr. Hussein is suggesting is that if this is approved as submitted, it, well, would language saying go to the design board? No, no, uh, I, I, no I stand corrected, Mr. Chair. I, I was saying refer them, refer Mr. Zayek's application now to the design review board to fix the language. Now? Yeah, and then have that corrected language then be submitted back to us for approval. 
since it has to already go to, to them to get anything reviewed, have them work on the language with Mrs. Zayek. Leave the application open, like Mrs. Zayek says, have them fix the language and then represent it the, the, based on, on their recommendation and Mrs. Zayek's back to us for approval. Well, I think that's, uh, there are going to be some, well, I think we're using a sledgehammer to put a tack in place, but uh, uh, it might be one way to do it. Uh, let's take that under consideration before we move on, uh, after we get down to, uh, well, let's finish questions from other members of the panel at this point, and then come back to this once we close that down. Uh, Ms. Blint, any questions? I'm sorry, Mr. Marriott, is that the sum of your? I think it's confusing enough, thanks. <laughs> okay, Ms. Blint. Any questions? Yeah, I'm um, I'm not really coming up with any questions, but I do support the um, the um, recommendation of Commissioner Hussein to have the Design Review Board come back to us. Okay, Mr. Lester, any questions? Uh, no questions. Ms. Adams, any questions? No questions. I think we're capable of approving the sign here. The sledgehammer intact. I agree with you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hussain, any further questions? Yeah, like I mentioned, I'd, I'd like us to push it over to the Design Review Board because with uh, Commissioner, um, sorry, with uh, Ms. Rodriguez's recommendation that um, we make sure we adhere to the languages and procedures as outlined in the Plan of Conservation Development too, and right. some other language that make sure let them iron it out before we um, approve this with missing any of those uh, amendments for text this is required by the state of Connecticut. Okay, Mr. Oliver seems to have disappeared. All right, I actually my my main concern, my main question that I was going to ask was uh, having two apple two uh, locations on one sign, or even three or four is. Uh, the one on Cottage Grove and uh, School Street, but uh, that, that's something that I guess we'll have to face if and when it shows up. Uh, are there any comments from the audience at this point? I didn't expect any. Mr. Hussain, any comment? Uh, no, I... Was that Mr. Zayek you were asking, Mr. Chairman? No, 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 Mr. Hussain. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm also with comments, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Ms. Adams, any comment? No comment. Mr. Lester? Uh, no comments. Ms. Flint? Um, no comments. Ms. Mara? I think the um, we ought to just uh, continue this hearing. Whether or not uh, the applicant should be formally directed back to the, the uh, Design Review Board to work out the language, I, I'm fine with it. It may cause some interference with our statutory time limit to act on his uh, application. Uh, I'm supportive of the, the idea. I think wrinkly, uh, working out you know, multiple uses or multiple demands uh, for a wayfinding sign is important. Otherwise, I think it fits with our plan of development. Uh, so I think we ought to continue this uh, let the applicant try to work out some uh, language trying to solve this problem. Hopefully we either work with staff or if they choose to formally go to the design, design review board to do that, or um, that would be fine by me. I just don't know that we should make it a formal requirement that they get referred to that. Millette, any comment? Uh, no comments. I, I do have, I don't want to call it a problem, but I sort of resist the idea of having another town commission starting to regulate our regulations. And I, I, as I said earlier, I, th I think we're making a tremendous red tape path to follow for what appears to be a relatively simple action. But uh, we can sort that out uh, through the voting process. Uh, Mr. Zayax, anything to wrap it up? Um, I, I think at this point, the only, it sounds to me like there's general support for this idea. 
Um, so I, I think the uh, I, the idea of wordsmithing a bit, the, the two issues, one is um, to ensure that there's only one sign, whether it's got one or two names on it, uh, but only one sign on each one of these these uh, properties that we're talking about so that we don't have a, a, a busy corner with five directional signs, independent directional signs uh, all over the place. Um, that was never the intent. And then the, the question is maybe work with staff and try to figure out, should, should it just be, should we just simply say that each sign has one, one use on it and that's it? You know, so first come, first serve. Um, or do we want to try to um, make it possible to have multiple names on one sign, you know, that conforms to all of the regulations, but it wouldn't be any bigger than 32 square feet, no matter what. So, and, you know, I would, I'd be happy if the commission accepted my, my modified regulation tonight, but on the other hand, you know, in, in the spirit of what the commission wants to do, we can work with staff to wordsmith it some more and bring it back in August. Thank you, Mr. Zayax. I have a motion to close the public hearing. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think we should uh, uh, continue the public hearing until the next um, uh, meeting. Um, yes, you are right. I, I was thinking we could handle that through separate motions outside of the public hearing. But you're right, if we do get Uh, we're inviting we're inviting the applicant to come back with amended yeah, language. So, yeah, okay. The app the applicant understands uh, what the general feeling vis-a-vis uh, -vis the uh, design, the review board. So then, all right, let's have a motion to table and continue at a future date. So moved. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Uh, I don't think there's any discussion. I think we've discussed it to death. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Uh, Chair reluctantly <laughs> votes aye. Uh, we'll see you next month, Mr. Zayax. Okay, thank you. Really didn't think that was going to take up that much time. Okay, we're down to 3D, Eastern Holdings, at 103 Old Windsor Road in an I-2 zone. Mr. Lester. How did I get knocked off? You're muted, you're muted, Byron. Oh, okay. Uh, legal notice published in the Hartford Current July 15th, July 22nd. Notice is hereby given that the Town Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing and a meeting on July 28th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Special permit application of Eastern Holding Group, comma, LLC for approval of a revised site plan to include outdoor storage, storage of tractor trailer boxes and temporary deferral of installation of required parking spaces, property located at 103 Old Windsor Road in an I-2 zone, owner, Eastern Holdings Group, comma, LLC. Okay, we're on board again. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulties there. Uh, who's here to make the presentation for this application? If anybody that's in the attendees list can raise their hand to present, I will make you a panelist. Oh, that's odd. They're moving over. There's just, it seems to be a little delay in when I promote to panelists, so. We're getting there. Okay, I think we're all set. 
Can you hear me, Jen? Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is TJ Baresi. I'm a licensed engineer and land surveyor. I'm um, here tonight representing Eastern Holdings LLC regarding a TP&Z application for a revised site plan uh, to, to get a permit to construct an accessory use building, a communication training tower with outdoor storage. Our property is located at 103 Old Windsor Road. It's a rear lot parcel containing 5.630 acres. It's located in the I-2 Restricted Industrial District. Property is located on the south side of Old Windsor Road, just past the Windsor Bloomfield Town Line. One hundred and three is currently the home of Eastern Communications. Uh, there's an existing four thousand eight hundred and twelve square foot office building on the property. That building is accessed off Old Windsor Road by a seven hundred foot long bituminous driveway. That driveway leads to two small parking areas adjacent to the building. That drive then continues south to old to 103R Old Windsor Road, which is also the home of Eastern Communications. Uh, if you go out there today, topographically, you'll see that the lot in the area of the proposed activity is relatively flat with open lawn. There's a very slight grade from west to east towards the existing driveway. The man-made berm surrounds the open lawn area uh, on the northwest and south sides. Wetlands exist on the property as shown. Portions of the wetlands around the property in on the abutting properties, which had to be considered with the Wetlands Commission. Limit of wetlands was taken from the official wetland map in 2001. Total wetlands on the property is 1.405 acres. Applicants proposing a 140 foot by 75 foot storage building as an accessory use. When you add that to the existing building, there's a total building area of 15,312 square feet, which is 6.2% of the property. New access drives and parking are proposed to accommodate the new building, including a 24 foot wide uh, bituminous drive off the existing driveway. The new building will have one loading dock and two drive up overhead doors. To the north of the proposed building, there'll be a 60 foot by 50 foot area for outdoor storage. Uh, that's also behind the existing building in the back uh, corner there for general construction equipment storage between jobs. The product in that area will be rotated as it's delivered back and forth from this area to, to job sites. Uh, to the southeast of the proposed building, there's a 180 foot high communication tower that's also proposed. And that area will be surrounded by a uh, gravel driveway, which is also accessed off the existing bituminous driveway. Majority of the parking and access drives are paved. Loading area behind the existing building is proposed to be reclaim or, or millings. Total parking required for the regulations is 31 spaces. We're proposing 31 spaces. However, we're proposing to have six spaces deferred. As far as grading, uh, site is graded with positive flow away from the building. Both the loading dock and overhead doors have positive flow away from the building. Nothing goes down into a loading dock. Most of the pavement and parking areas are curbed. The rear gravel area is uncurbed. A formal drainage system is proposed within the paved portion to collect the stormwater. Stormwater is collected in the catch basins, then rooted uh, through a pipe to a new uh, detention basin south of the proposed building. Stormwater management calculations have been submitted. A study was analyzed to run off to all the different wetland regions around the property. The an analysis looked at the pre-development and post-development conditions. Study indicates the proposed detention basin uh, is sufficiently sized to offset the increased flow from the new impervious surfaces. As far as utilities, uh, MDC water and sewer currently serve the site. The new building will have a small bathroom on it, which will tie into the existing services. Two hydrants exist on the site along the driveway for fire protection. The plan is to utilize the existing and proposed building lighting uh, to, to provide safe lighting around the site. There's also an existing light uh, on the property. That light is being proposed to be relocated along the driveway for additional site lighting. Um, as far as vegetation and erosion controls, 
Uh, there's erosion controls uh, proposed throughout, which were reviewed by the Wetland Commission. Have all your, your typical ones, um, silt fence, silt sacks, uh, temporary soil, soil protection, things of that nature. Uh, during construction, the detention basin will serve as a temporary sediment trap. Uh, once construction is done, that will be all cleaned up and restabilized uh, for post-construction conditions. As far as landscaping, we do show some new street trees along the existing driveway to kind of soften the exposure of the new building. Uh, the berm that goes around the site is proposed to be uh, re cleaned up, stabilized and replanted with grasses um, for, for ease, of, ease of maintenance. Uh, during the Wetland Commission uh, hearings and as part of the Wetland Commission approval, Peter recommended uh, some additional bushes and trees along that berm. Uh, we're more than happy to comply with that. Uh, however, we still uh, want to make sure that maintenance is, uh, is easy to do along that berm. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we went to Inland Butlins earlier this month and received their approval. Uh, we received conditions and technical review from Peter and the engineering department. Uh, many of those conditions overlap from one another. Bulk of the comments were pertaining to labeling line types, showing additional information on the plan, things of that nature. The only design change that they wanted us to look at was adding a four bay in the detention basin. And uh, we look, we looking at the, uh, the pitch of the uh, drainage pipes uh, when we do that at the same time, which we're, we're, we agreed to do. I uh, received a memo from the town planner. Uh, she had a few comments regarding site lighting, signage, and the outdoor storage area. Met with Jen today and we discussed all those items and we're more than happy to comply uh, with her recommendations. I believe Steve Slade, the applicant, is online today. If you have any questions that I might not be able to answer, I'm sure he'll be able to uh, help us out. Before we move forward, uh, for the record, Jen Rodriguez, I just wanted to ask if the commission um, would like me to share the screen. I did pull the plans up because I know um, I mentioned with TJ before, I think we weren't sure if he would be able to share um, from his technology. So did you want me to pull that up while we have the discussion? Why not? Sure, bring it up. Okay. And then if at any point it's too much and you're ready to get rid of it, I will pull it off the screen. Hmm. Was, um, were there any others that were going to present after you, TJ? Uh, not to my knowledge, no. Okay, over to you then, Jennifer. Okay, great. So in a memo to your Town Plan and Zoning Commission dated July 24th regarding 103 Old Windsor Road, I do provide a description, which the applicant's already done, so I won't repeat that. Regarding the use, Section 4.4 Industrial 2 District permits office space. Deferred parking, outdoor storage, as well as storage of tractor trailer boxes are permitted only by special permit. Because this is a special permit application, you'll want to consider suitability of the site for the proposed uses and note for the record any findings related to the same, such as appropriateness of use, lighting, noise, and traffic generated. The uh, commission will also want to consider what the main and accessory uses for the site are. And while the newly proposed building is noted as an accessory building, it may in fact be considered by the applicant to contain a minor use. The building itself is larger than the building that's considered to be the main building. And the commission will want to consider, consider whether both uses contained within the building are suitable for the site as main uses and just note that for the record or perhaps have a, a note changed on the plan. The zoning compliance table on sheet one of the plan set meets the zoning regulations bulk requirements for lot size other than width, which was granted per variance and that's noted on the plan. It's compliant for dimension and height of the buildings. The building setbacks are also conforming the tower setback is approvable by the commission per section 8.3 regarding cellular towers and that reads freestanding radio or television antenna or those mounted on structures may exceed the maximum height regulations provided that no such structure shall exceed a height 
that is more than the distance to the nearest property line. Uh, the applicant should note on the plan that the property and adjacent property will be merged to comply with this regulation. And I'll just note there are a couple of ways that that can be done. The properties can be merged to be made into one. Sometimes um, the uh, property owners will create a cross easement. Um, so those are just a couple of the legal tools that uh, can be required or can accomplish um, that goal. And then there's also a separate table indicating that the property conforms in terms of site coverage. Regarding parking, a parking table is provided on sheet one of the plan set indicating that the applicant's proposal complies with the regulations. However, they're requesting that six of the 31 spaces be deferred. This request per section 6.2 H2 requires special consideration the applicant must dem demonstrate to the commission that adequate parking will be available for all proposed uses on the site. Adequate parking in industrial areas is essential to avoiding traffic concerns and minimizing zoning violations in the future. Regarding elevations, the application submittal um, did not include building of elevations, but I believe those were sent over after, if maybe the applicant can um, talk to that a little bit after I'm done reading the report. Um, and then the applicant should provide a photometric plan with lot and building mounted lighting locations and pole and fixture details to demonstrate compliant lighting fixtures and levels for the site um, for commission review. If that's not able to be provided this evening, I would recommend if you do decide to move forward with an approval that you ask that lighting, um, including uh, fixtures and light levels be reviewed by staff prior to a final plan being filed in the clerk's office. Uh, regarding landscaping, the applicant has included a landscaping plan for your review. You may want to consider discussing whether the applicant per can provide additional native and beneficial trees throughout the site while still having the ability to operate and maintain landscaping and lawn areas. Um, I did ask whether any fencing would be added and uh, the applicant indicated today that it would not. Regarding signs, the applicant has not provided any sign information other than noting an existing location on the sign shown located out by the road. And I asked it whether it would be maintained and refaced um, or if a new sign and location would be proposed. And then I'll just note that if there would be any changes, if the commission can, as part of their motion, indicate whether they would like any of the sign information to return to the commission or be reviewed by staff. Uh, as indicated, um, wetlands did review uh, the plans. And regarding fire marshal comments, I don't believe I have any comments to share. And then below on the bottom of the report, I do provide there a possible motion and conditions that can be either referred to or read into the record should you decide to take action and approve this evening. Anything else, Jennifer? No, that is all. Okay, thank you. Um, We'll now move over to questions from the audience. Yeah, I really didn't expect too many. Let's go to the commission. Uh, we'll start at the other end this time. Hang on a minute. Okay. Uh, Ms. Adams, any questions? No questions at this time. Mr. Hussain. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, there was a few questions, but I think, um, I think based on Jennifer's comments that those will be answered, I assume, at their next presentation because I had questions about their lighting, which I don't see here. Um, there's some stuff, other stuff that I think would be covered in the, um, the next presentation that, um, covering all the stuff that Jennifer asked for. Uh, the other thing that I have right now is um, what's the proposed use for an accessory building? Storage. 
Is it just mostly storage? It's it's all storage. There, there'll be a small bathroom area in it. Other than that, it's storage of uh, um, material for the construction of uh, cell towers. And Steve Slade, I believe, is on is on the panel, and he he might be better answering that one. You might be able to give you more details about that. Sure, I'm happy to. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep. Yes. Great. Uh, Steve Slade, I am the uh, manager of Eastern Holdings Group. I'm also the president of Eastern Communications, who is the leasee of not only 103, uh, the existing building 103, but the rear lot and building at 103R, which is our primary operations point <clears throat> for Eastern Communications. Uh, the business has been uh, established and doing business in Bloomfield for over 10 years now, and we have grown from a rental facility to this particular property where we've uh, built the building out back at 103R back in 2014 and 15. It's our operational base. Uh, business continues to grow and has exceeded the capacity of that building from an operations perspective and for warehousing of materials. Primarily, um, the uh, industry, wireless industry, has uh, been booming, as many of you uh, know, for the last 15 years. We have gotten ourselves into a position of growth where our employee base is uh, over 50 now, and we expect to be over 70 in the next 18 months. Uh, with that being said, our contracts are also, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, escalating, and with that has come a huge material need, <clears throat> excuse me, need for uh, storage of customer provided material and material that we purchase and provide for uh, the building of wireless networks for AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile for example, throughout Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Western Mass. Uh, this property has served us very well from an operational perspective. Uh, we recently purchased 103 from Main Drilling and Blasting back in March with the intention of doing just this, utilizing the current building for office space and our uh, training facility, as well as building this uh, building here, the new uh, proposed structure for warehousing of material. Uh, to that extent, we've had to uh, rent or sublease uh, a building over on Addison Drive in Windsor for the last 10 months um, in order to accommodate our need. And we are hoping to get approval here for the building to move everything on site and have one property for our safety and training division, our operations division, and our warehousing and management division, uh, along with logistics. And that's the purpose of uh, our proposal here tonight. Thanks, Mr. Slade. Um, for the proposed or future com tells, this, sorry, the communication tower, was that also going to be using for training once you build it, or is it just only for actually um, actual service? So it is. Uh, we we spend our uh, five days a week with our twenty five of our fifty employees, and soon to be an additional twenty employees, as I mentioned, that will be working at elevations for the installation and maintenance of these networks. Part of that is an extensive training program, not only for onboarding of new employees and getting them uh, trained in technique and safety practices, but also to recertify them, which takes place every six to 12 months, and in some cases, two years uh, for the training purposes. <clears throat> right now, we have no intention of having any cellular carriers locating on this. There are adjacent sites uh, in nearby that currently accommodate their network needs. Uh, we are building this solely for training purposes. However, the structure is designed heavily enough. If a need were to arise down the road, it could be available for them. It is not our intent, nor is it uh, our current direction here. Training and recertification. All right, thanks. And then um, I guess, Mr. Beretti, the, um, the proposed building, I know I see these square footage. What, what's your, I see your first full elevation. How high do you think that building is going to be? Uh, PDS, uh, Tim from PDS is online and possibly Mike. Uh, they have the information and details about the building. They might be able to provide an answer to that. Yes, this is Tim Mulcahy from PDS Engineering. The building is going to be approximately uh, 26 feet in height. All right, thanks. And then I had the last one, um, I guess, if it's for you, Mr. Beretti, or whoever's doing the parking, I saw you show the 18-wheeler, um, the or the, the, the truck back into the building, the accessory building, it looks like it's offloaded. 
Um, is the turn-in template or that curb cut wide enough for them to get performed that um, maneuver if they're, if they're going um, southbound on that existing bituminous driveway? Yes, I dropped all the templates on for a truck to come in, bank a right, and then loop around as if, as if it's heading out and then back back into the overhead door. Okay, so you that, were that's, saying that's how that the, first the, curb cut is where they're going to turn in. That first... Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. What if for whatever reason, though, that you, it has to make that second one the entry and exit? Is it possible to do that, that second entry? It would be possible for them to continue down and then back in. Yeah. Um, if, if they ultimately had to. Uh, but okay. that, that's actually a good question because the position of the building and that overhead door and that 24-foot wide access drive was picked and laid out where that template showed where it had to go if that makes any sense to you All right so, but, I, so I, I dropped the templates on to see where that where that 24 foot wide driveway had to go for the truck to make that maneuver right but i i see what you're saying but but the main thing though is that if he had to for whatever reason let's say that first um curb cut was not available that second entry in the driveway he'll be able to go up or come down south and then back in correct with that absolutely foot aisle. yeah yeah okay great all right. I think that's all I have for now, um, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Before we proceed, Jennifer, could you uh, get this plan off the screen, please? Thank you. Mr. Mara, any questions? You're muted, sir. There we go. Um, I just have a question about what kind of outside storage are you looking for? Right. You're, you're going to build the building for inside storage, but you're also looking for a permit for outside? Yes, it's, uh, Steve, are you on still? Yes, I am still here. <clears throat> yes, that's correct. Uh, currently, the inside storage is for items that are uh, highly valuable, primarily radio equipment, things that are customer provided that we have contractual obligations for camera and security and things. But there are other items that move in and out of our facility daily uh, for installation on towers. So galvanized steel products uh, like antenna platforms, and canopies and load frames uh, that we install uh, on a regular basis, as well as some generators. We do a lot of generator work for American Tower and T-Mobile right now, and those generators are delivered to us. They're temporarily stored before they deploy to the site. So some outside storage to facilitate that gives us the, uh, the enough room in for the interior weather sensitive type items. Um, and those are, the, those are the things that we're doing. The occasionally the box truck um, for deliveries that <clears throat> that we currently own would be parked over there in the event that it's loaded and not unloaded that particular day. That's how we took a look at that. Right. Uh, we are do not you plan to stack any uh, things. Do you plan to build any structures to effectuate no. storage? No, we don't. These are all items that are, uh, are not sensitive to the elements and can be stored year round outside on a temporary basis and no, no type of cover, for example, over them and no racking. And I, I looked at your plan, but I didn't see and maybe I just missed. Are there any areas here dedicated to outside storage or just wherever you can find space? Yeah, I believe it is the northwest corner of the parking area or just north of the building, the proposed building. Okay, thank you. So the applicant forwarded something just before the meeting. I'm happy to share it if you'd like. Oh, are you about to pull that up? Okay, great. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Yes. So the, so the shaded area behind the uh, existing building, which is shown in red, is a 60 foot by 50 foot uh, area that whatever outside storage they would use or need would would be stored in that area there. And the note to the right kind of uh, verbalizes what uh, uh, Mr. Slade uh, just mentioned to you guys about what would be there and and uh, that the frequency of material coming in and out on a daily basis. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Mayor, I don't know anything further. 
No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay, Miss. Uh, my screen's jumping around like a maniac. <laughs> Miss Blint, any questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, to um, to Jennifer, um, does the height of the cell tower exceed a height that's more than the distance to the nearest property line, or does it meet that limit? It does exceed the property line that is to the west. However, the property beyond that property line is also owned by uh, the same owner. So that's why there was a note in the plan that the merger should occur of the two properties or at least cross easements to um, demonstrate that common ownership. Great, thanks. I, that sure. makes it clear. And then also, yeah. will the tower be lit? This is a question for the applicant. And will it Will it be lit at night? The tower will not be lit. It will be below the FAA guidelines for a lit tower in that area. Uh, there's currently a tower up the street, <clears throat> excuse me, that was recently approved by Goose Town, um, Goose Town Radio, I guess they are, um, at the intersection of Blue Hills and Old Windsor Road. Uh, it is The tower is being proposed at the same height, and that tower is also not lit. So they don't have to have flashing lights at the top Correct. or okay yeah the fa requirements uh, in this location is at 200 feet uh, anything in excess of 200 feet would be required to be lit okay is that, is that clear with command aircraft we have Helicopter. not contacted we have not contacted command aircraft but we have done some research on the fa website and we have been cleared through them okay. uh, for, yeah. at 180 yeah. feet so helicopters are a concern Mm. Okay, uh, Mr. That's Lester, any, any, I'm sorry, Ms. Blunt, are you through? Uh, well, also just wondering if uh, any training will be done at night. No, there'll be no training at night. We do all of our training during Monday through Friday, 7 to 5 p.m. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. Mr. Lester. Uh, no questions. Mr. Millett. No questions. All right. Moving back to the audience quickly, any comments from the audience? Hearing none, any comments from the commission? Mr. Millett, try you again. Uh, no comments. Mr. Lester. No comments. Mr. Mara. Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. Ms. Blint. No, sir, not this time. Mr. Hussein. Uh, Mr. I had one um, question only because the, it came up after my question period when they showed a temporary um, storage, outdoor storage. It encompasses about four or five of the spaces, the parking spaces. How, how would then that be addressed if, if you're putting temporary storage that affects five or six of the parking spaces? The, the, the parking space is shown as what's required by the plan, but the spaces that they actually need, right now they currently use eight spaces. Uh, with the addition of the of the proposed accessory building, uh, they would only need another four for uh, employees, employee parking. So even though we have over 30 spaces here, they're only going to be using 12 of them. Um, and that the, the, park, the parking spaces in, in back where the outdoor storage is proposed, uh, that's encumbered by the outdoor storage area, uh, in, in theory, won't be used at all. Okay. Thank you. No comment, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Ms. Adams, any comments? No comments. I'm sure has none. Uh, back to you, Mr. Barisi, for a wrap up if you so desire. Uh, no, we appreciate everything you guys said and offered. And um, uh, like Steve said, he's been in town for, for quite a while. This is an extended use of uh, an existing business in town. Uh, I think what we're proposing here is not uh, too onerous and it uh, meets all the regulations. Uh, based on the uh, recommended conditions of approval by Jen, we're more than happy to comply and uh, with, with all, her, all her conditions of approval. Okay, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Move a second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> Chair votes aye. Back on the agenda, we have before us the application of Eastern Holdings. 
revised site plan for 103 Old Windsor Road. What's well, the commission's pleasure? We would entertain a motion for approval. But anyone have anything else? Do we have the actual recommendation and conditions from Jennifer? I didn't see it in my package. It's online. Oh. Yeah. I can make a motion. Please. Um, I'll move uh, to approve the site plan and special permit application of Eastern Holdings Group LLC for approval of a revised site plan to include outdoor storage, storage of tractor trailer boxes, temporary deferral of installation of required parking spaces, an expansion of the current use of the property with the addition of a 75 foot by 140 foot accessory use storage building in a 180 foot high cell tower with related parking access drives and infrastructure. The property is located at 103 Old Windsor Road in an I-2 zone owner Eastern Holding Group LLC. This approval is subject to conformance with the reference plans as may be required to be modified the representations made on the record and the conditions outlined in the director of planning's memo dated July 24th, 2022. We have a second to that. Second. Thank you. Any discussion of the motion? Uh, would you entertain a uh, uh, friendly amendment just to uh, specifically reference the plan that was um, uh, submitted today and referenced at the hearing uh, with regard to the location and area for outside storage. I would absolutely agree to that. Any, anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Chair votes aye. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, on to 3E, special application of Camps Greenway uh, with reference to 390 Woodland Avenue. Mr. Lester. Yes, uh, legal notice published in Hartford Current July 15th and July 22nd. Notice is hereby given that the Town Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing at a meeting on July 28th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Special permit application of Camps Greenway Pallet, comma, LLC for approval for outdoor storage. Property located at 390 Woodland Avenue in I-2 zone. Owner is RREF V-P Vision-390 LLC. Thank you. Who's here to make the application? Um, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Dave Zayax. I'm with uh, professional engineer with F.A. Heskett Associates. I'm representing the applicant this evening. Um, probably online, uh, Jennifer, is uh, Dominic Davey and Gregory Shaughnessy. They represent uh, Camp Screenway. If they're there, uh, they would be available to answer any questions of the commission. Uh, just for the record, I submitted to staff today uh, the public hearing sign affidavit and the certificate of mailings to our butters as required for special permit. Uh, that's in, that should be in your uh, public hearing file. Uh, this site is, um, I think I'll try to share a screen here. Um, this is down on um, Woodland Avenue. It's 390. It's an existing building of 55,130 square feet. It's a one-story industrial building. It was built about 10 years ago. Uh, it shares the main driveway uh, with the Niagara bottling facility that was built a few years ago and with the uh, industrial facility located just to the south. Similar type building, but it's a larger building, uh, all located on the east side of Woodland. Uh, the building is currently empty. And uh, Camps Greenway Pallet LLC would like to occupy the entire building as a single tenant. Uh, Camps Greenway is a, a company that uh, refurbishes and manufactures uh, wood pallets that support all of the storage and warehousing facilities in the, in the area. They have several facilities 
uh, down as far as New Jersey and up the coast. Um, so they're looking to uh, occupy this entire building um, in order to operate this uh, facility the proper way. They need some outdoor storage to uh, handle um, the receipt of wood pallets and uh, to, to store them temporarily outside um, as they're refurbished and then uh, loaded and taken off uh, to nearby industrial users. So um, the building is here is this dark roof. The employees parking is in the front of the building along Woodland Avenue. And all of the loading operations and the outdoor storage would take place at the rear of the building, which is the east side of the building facing Niagara um, bottling. Uh, the proposed outdoor storage would be about 7,500 square feet and it would be on the existing asphalt. So uh, we're not proposing uh, any changes to the building facade. There will be some reworking of a few doors uh, on the east side that will be taken care of uh, through a normal building permitting process. Um, there'll be no changes to landscaping. There's a small berm that was originally constructed with the building along Woodland Avenue. And then there's a nice row of mature evergreens here on the south side of the loading area that shields it if you're going down the driveway or you're coming northbound on Woodland Avenue. Uh, there's a nice strand of uh, mature evergreen trees located there. Uh, we're also not proposing any changes to the existing lighting. Uh, the front parking lot is lighted with uh, conventional uh, parking lot lighting and in the back. Uh, there are wall, wall packs on the back side of the building that illuminate the, uh, the asphalt area in the back. Um, all of the manufacturing operations related to uh, handling the pallets, remanufacturing or manufacturing new ones will take place inside the building. So all the machinery associated with cutting wood, assembling wood, things of that nature is in, inside the building. The only thing that will be outside is either raw material, wood, or finished or, or, or you know, pallet, uh, completed pallets. And um, we're looking at a maximum height of stack of material in the back, no higher than 20 feet. So if that was a condition of the special permit. As far as parking goes, um, there are 50 existing parking spaces for employees and customers in the front. And when you folks approved this uh, site plan back about 10 years ago, um, you had uh, 61 deferred parking spaces in the rear. If you do all the calculations for this size building, you need 111 parking spaces. Um, but for this tenant, uh, we would be, uh, they, they anticipate a demand of about 30 to 35 parking spaces for the employees. They have very few customer walk-ins. This, this is mostly all contract work uh, with uh, other facilities in the area. So uh, any customers or salesmen or something like that would be you know, one or two at any given time. So there's plenty of parking in the front uh, with the 60 parking spaces and there'll be no employee parking in the rear. Um, we did get um, staff comments uh, from uh, the director of planning and um, dated uh, July 24th, which I'm sure she will go over. Um, we did, we have been working closely with the fire marshal, uh, Roger Nelson on this building, uh, mostly with concern about the inside, since the inside will be full of wood products. Um, We've had uh, several meetings with him and uh, you have, I think in the record, his last email that was sent to me, I'm not sure if it, it came in the form of a formal comment or not, but it's basically as it simple as that, that the drawing appears to meet all requirements for your proposed high hazard combustible storage. So as far as the inside of the building goes, um, uh, the fire marshal is any concern. Obviously, any minor details will get worked out during the building permitting process. And then outside, he didn't have any general comments with, uh, with the site since it's a reuse of an existing site. And, uh, you know, the out outdoor storage is, uh, is all, all wood materials. There's no other liquid combustibles or anything like that outside. Um, so in, in general summary, um, it's basically a reuse of the existing building and site to a use that's permitted in the zone. And uh, we're not really making any substantial changes. The, the reason we're here really tonight is for the outdoor storage area of 7,500 feet. 
Uh, everything else will be handled by a remodeling, a renovation building permit in the inside of the building, um, which I think is actually starting. That process has already started. And I, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mrs. Zayax. Jennifer, any comments? I do, and I did get a letter from the fire department. So I, when I get to that part of the report, I'll make sure to comment. Thank you. Turning the, to the audience, I'm sorry, is there something else? Oh, oh <laughs> I just mentioned that I would read the, the fire marshal's report and then I was gonna go through my uh, report okay. briefly and yeah. touch on things that the applicant hasn't yet. Um, the proposed use is uh, in your section 4.4, industrial two district permits warehouse and manufacturing. Um, this is an in existing industrial site. Uh, it also, um, our regulations also propose outdoor storage by special permit. And again, as with the other applications with a special permit application, uh, we need to consider suitability of the site um, record any findings related to the same, such as appropriateness of use, lighting, noise, and traffic. And then uh, the zoning compliance table on the plan of the proposal meets the zoning regulations bulk requirements for the existing site configuration and no changes are proposed other than the parking and outdoor storage. Regarding parking, a table is provided on the plan which proposes 48 spaces where 111 are required with 63 spaces reserved. The area of 63 spaces would be used for outdoor storage. And the special parking request per section 6.2 D1 requires discussion and commission's consideration. The applicant must demonstrate to the commission that adequate parking will be available for all proposed uses on the site and adequate parking in industrial areas, as you know, is essential and that avoids traffic concerns and minimizing zoning violations in the future. I don't believe elevations uh, were included, but this is an existing site. I don't believe any changes are proposed to the building facade. And then regarding exterior building mounted or site lighting, um, if, if so, uh, if changes are proposed, um, I would ask that either the commission um, give some direction there or that those lighting changes be proposed to the staff for review prior to making any changes. Uh, the applicant has not provided any additional landscaping uh, plan that I'm aware of. The commission may want to consider discussing whether the applicant can provide additional mix of native and beneficial canopy and evergreen trees throughout the site while still having the ability to operate and maintain landscaping and lawn areas and whether any um, fencing would be added. Um, with residential uses across the street, can any additional trees be provided in the front yard in such a way that um, they would not obstruct visibility? And I do believe that the applicant uh, sent something over, which I can try to find unless they wanna pull it up regarding the vegetation that's already existing in the front yard. And um, as similar to the other applications that you've reviewed this, this evening, I would ask that um, any new or changed signs at least come to staff for review. And if the commission would like uh, the applicant's signage to come back to them, they can certainly require that. Uh, regarding the fire marshal comments, um, I believe he was asking that that stockpile that's outside any storage of material would be moved farther to the east along the property line. Um, and I can pull up his comments uh, because I did get, uh, this evening I did get a formal um, memo from his office. Then at the end of the report, I do provide a possible motion and uh, conditions that you are welcome to refer to in your motion or read for the record. And I will try to, um, oh, it looks like the applicant has shared the vegetation that's in the front yard. Um, so that might, you know, provide some extra information um, regarding my comment on landscaping in the front. And I will, um, I'll pull up the fire marshals Comments.
Okay, there they are. Um, yep. Yeah. Can you see that there? So um, this office has reviewed the plans for Camps Greenway Pallet LLC. We ask that the storage area in the middle of the parking lot be moved over against the east curb line to allow clear access for fire apparatus along the building. Um, and then they did submit a drawing, which I will find for you. Just give me a moment. And that was their suggestion that they just shift it over. So I would, um, you know, again, I would recommend that you, if you're entertaining a motion to approve, uh, which you certainly could do, you uh, would just want to mention on the record that you'd like the placement of the outdoor storage to be acceptable to the fire marshal um, prior to commencing. Sounds good. That is all I have to report. Thank you very much. Any questions from the audience? Is there anyone left in the audience? Oh. I don't see any hands raised. Okay. I think the chairman's muted. Chair Burson, you are muted. Chair Burson is no longer muted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions from the panel. Okay, Mr. Hussain, I still got you at the that end of the board. You first. Yeah. Um. What type of you're still keeping the loading docks open, and so you're still bringing in the um the heavy trucks to for um the outdoor storage, or are you using that to deliver the raw materials in there? Yeah, uh, there's uh, several doors along the back. Um, and then there's actually uh, ramps on each end for small box trucks to pull up into the building itself for delivery. So there'll be a combination of those things to yeah. deal with uh, both delivery of, uh, you know, raw products and picking up the finished pallets. And you mentioned that um, the building height is 20 feet, right? No, our, our outdoor storage would be restricted to 20 feet. The building's probably 25 feet or so. So a single story building. Okay, and it's the same, and it'll match, it matches the current one for the building height roughly? Or uh, it'll be a little bit lower. It'll be lower. Lower, than, lower. Yeah. okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. we're down, we're in a, an area where the ground is depressed four feet, you know, for the loading dock. So mm -hmm. um, the building's taller. And I know it's, you're already putting impervious on impervious. So for drainage, it doesn't affect your drainage per se, correct? No, there's uh, uh, plenty of, uh, you know, modern catch basins in the back. And then there's a detention pond back there that uh, deals with runoff. Uh, we've uh, discussed that with staff and with Peter for wetlands and uh, we're, we're okay. Okay. All right. That's all I had, Mr. Chair. Thanks. Mr. Barrow. Um, do you plan on doing any fencing around your uh, outside storage? Not at this time. Um, they're hoping not to do that. Um, if there is a security issue that pops up, they, they may have to fence it in, but they would hope not to do that. It just, it's, it's just another maintenance item to deal with, you know, with snow removal and things. Um, and what are the planned hours of use for this business? Is this, I mean, I know this is a, a site permit, but you're not proposing any great lighting. No, it's uh, pretty modest, just security lighting in the back. It's primarily a business oriented. I don't think they do more than one shift. And I, I know you said uh, you, you laid out how many employees you expect, uh, but how many employees would be uh, working at any one time in there? Um, no more than 30 to 35. And you proposed plenty of uh, parking for those employees without impacting your ability to do the outside storage? Yeah, there's 50, there's 50 paved parking spaces in front where the employees would park. So 
you've got a good surplus there, plus for, you know a couple of spaces for customers maybe coming and going or salesmen or something like that. They don't do walk-in business. There's their business is by contract. So people don't just come in and pick up a pellet. I don't, I don't I think, think I, so. I, I, yeah, I don't think you can, no. It fits in your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else, Mr. Mara? No, I think I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Adams. No questions. I just, Thank you. no questions. Mr. Lesnar. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chair. Ms. Splint. Uh, just wondering if there's an opportunity to update the look of the building in any way. Is that a consideration? I know that planner had asked that in um, the memo, any changes to the building facade or any upgrades to its exterior look? No, I mean, it's, it's only 10 years old. So uh, it's a brick building. It matches oh, all the other buildings down that east side of the road. It was all built by the same developer at one time. Oh, that's what I was going to ask. What was it made of, the material? Yeah, oh, it's all brick. Yeah, okay. It's all brick in the front and then block around the sides. Great. Thanks. Hmm? Mr. Millett, any questions? No, I don't have any questions. All right, turning back to the audience. Any comments from the audience? Okay, hearing none, let's go back to comments from the commission. Mr. Millett, you can lead off. Uh, no comments. Ms. Blunt. Also, no comments. Mr. Lester. No comments. Ms. Adams. So it's a very novel idea, and I, I'm actually interested in the concept. I, I thought when I saw free pallets, you're just going to re reduce the amount of free pallets I can get to either burn in the fire pit or make furniture out of. They're great for uh, <laughs> gardening as well. But <laughs> it's actually a very nice idea. Welcome. Yeah, it's uh, these pallets are a big deal now because of all the uh, warehousing and activities in the area. It's a huge business. Yeah. No, any comment, Mr. Mao? Oh no, I'm I have no comments. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. Any comment? Yeah, just the one comment. I know the requirement for the parking is key, and um, just obviously, just try to maintain your business as as um, projected with um, Mr. Zayek about the parking maximizing the front so that it doesn't have to spill over into the other properties. Thanks. Okay, my, I would only comment, I'm very happy to see a building not abandoned and filled up and reused and uh, restoring a little of it. Well, I'm sure the residents wouldn't agree with me, but restoring a little more life in the middle of the Mr. Zayek, anything to write, uh, round up uh, uh just very, uh, very, very uh, quickly, two things. The fire marshal's latest comment that uh, we won't have any problem with shifting a little bit to the east, given the room he needs. And then the uh, one other issue was the uh, the buffering of the, of the one residence that's across the street from us. Uh, that that resident fronts on uh, Maka Road. Uh, that's where their driveway goes to. So um, fortunately, there's a very mature a vegetation line on the west side of uh, Woodland Avenue um, across the street from us. This was that photo we had up before. You can sort of see the back end of their house here, but there's a nice mature thing. And then, and unfortunately, um, uh, all of the loading and truck operations are on the other side of our building. So uh, I think that should provide a, a good buffer to those folks across the street. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would entertain a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Chair votes aye. We're back on the agenda. And I uh, would entertain a motion of approval for item uh, three uh, E uh, 
Camp Greenway Pallet uh, for 330, uh, 390 Woodland Avenue. I'll make a motion that we Thank approve you. the site. Oh, go for it. Sure. Uh, the motion to approve the site plan application, a special permit application of Camps Greenway Pallet LLC for approval for outdoor storage, property located 390 Woodland Ave, I2 zone, owner REF 3 P Vision 390 LLC, as subject to the conformance with the reference plans. As required to be modified, representations, representations made on the record, um, including placement of the outdoor storage uh, recommended by the fire marshal and the conditions included in our planner's report. Do you have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Chair votes aye. Thank you, folks. Have a nice evening. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful and night. Finally, item 3F, application of Bloomfield Property Group for property located at 9 Britain Drive. Mr. Lester. Uh, legal notice published in the Hartford Current, July 15th and July 22nd, 2022. Notice is hereby given that the Town Planning and Zoning Commission will conduct a public hearing at a meeting on July 28th, 2022, commencing at 7 p.m. to consider the following. Special permit application of the Bloomfield Property Group, comma, LLC, for approval of a change in usage to allow for a personal fitness slash training facility with accessory retail. Property located at 9 Britain Drive, unit number two in an I-2 zone. Owner, the Bloomfield Group, comma, LLC. Thank you. Who's here to make that application? Um, J.R. Laliberti from the Bloomfield Property Group. You're on, sir. Um, so um, this building um, is... Uh, 22,700 square feet. Um, about a year and a half ago, I purchased it and renovated it. Hermel Products um, was the seller of the property. They stayed as a tenant and consolidated down to about 16,000 square feet. Um, the rest of the square footage in the building um, was split into two tenant spaces, uh, approximately 4,000 square feet each. Um, one of those tenant spaces in space three is College Hunks. Um, which hauls away um, debris for people and, and so forth. Um, and, and in the space two, uh, we had her, we had um, Habitat for Humanity um, building houses in there for the last uh, year. They would make a house, store it in there, and then have a flatbed come and take it and then go um, erect it um, at, at a site. Um, Habitat for Humanity just left. We now have a new tenant called New Movement Athletics. Um, they are two um, um, personal trainers. Um, it is not a gym. They don't have anywhere next to the kind of equipment an open gym would have. They, their specialty is one to three person classes. Um, occasionally, they may have a little, little bit of a larger class, but they will never need more than 10 parking spaces um, for um, their, their classes. Um, the classes are strictly set up by appointment. There's a gap in between classes. Um, it's a good, clean use. No parking um, incompatibilities at all. Hermel her uses about 15 parking spaces. They come in at 5 o'clock in the morning. They leave at 2.30 in the afternoon. College Hunks uses about a dozen parking spaces at their peak. Um, they come in at 7 in the morning. They're usually gone by 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Most of these classes are... are at the end of the day or on Saturdays, um, um, I counted more than 50 parking spaces, um, which means even if they were all there at the same time, we would have 25% of the parking spaces still vacant. Is that it, sir? Um, I think so. <laughs> okay. 
Jennifer. Okay, so I will um, go ahead and read my report. And then I will mention that we did get a couple of emails um, from the applicant. And if, um, let's see, I'm gonna try to pull those up. Um, I didn't get them well in advance, so I haven't re um, reviewed everything or done any calculations, but they're simple enough that I think um, if we add them to uh, tonight's discussion, it won't be terribly burdensome. So um, my report dated July 24th regarding Nine Britain Drive uh, does state a description which the applicant has already um, gone through. So I'll just point out that it's a multi-tenant building and it's also in your industrial too. And the regulations do provide um, that personal training is not listed as a permitted use. However, the regulations section 4.4.C4 um, in the sections M, W, and AA. They permit similar uses, including indoor tennis, retail as an accessory to personal service, and a section AA that says other uses that do not conflict with the plan of conservation and development and are not otherwise prohibited in the zone. Adaptive uh, reuse of vacant industrial space when proposed use is suitable is a great way to recruit and maintain businesses, mitigate blight and bring new investment to a property. So I find that the use itself I can make sense here, um, but you have a few things to look at because this is a special permit application. You'll wanna consider like the other applications this evening, the um, suitability of the use uh, as it pertains to lighting, noise and traffic generated. The applicant does not propose any outdoor changes and has not submitted an existing site plan for review. At the end of my report, I've attached a GIS aerial photograph for reference at the, um, uh, sorry, and including a property base map. And while no changes are proposed to the exterior of the building or site, reviewing the whole property as it exists and in the context of adjacent parcels is important, especially because this is a special permit. The applicant uh, regarding parking has not provided a parking table uh, with all of the uses of the property units, the required combined parking based on all of those uses and the amount provided to demonstrate compliance. So usually there's a parking table that's um, either submitted in narrative form or on a site plan. Um, I recognize that this is an existing site and we did get an email from the applicant. Um, the applicant did review that quickly this evening as well. And the, e uh, the email indicates that there were 50 spaces total. Hermel uses 15 of those. College Hunks uses 12 and the trainer six to 10 generally. And again, uh, just like the applicant indicated that would leave more than 25% unused spaces. Um, so it does appear that maybe the mix of uses would um, still be accommodated in the existing parking. Regarding elevations, no changes are proposed this, at this time that I'm aware of to the facade, so none were submitted. I'm also not aware of any landscaping or lighting changes. If the commission uh, through this discussion does require any, those can certainly be added as conditions for staff review prior to fi filing any final plans or prior to issuance of a building permit. Uh, regarding fire marshal comments, I don't have any at this time. And then at the end of the report, as usual, I do provide a possible motion and conditions that you're welcome to either reference or read into the record. And that's all I have to report. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the audience? Is there any audience left? Uh, could be. Don't see any hands raised. No oh, hands raised. Okay, uh, questions from the commission. We're going to kick that out again. And Barry's muted. 
Okay. Questions, Mr. Millett? Uh, no questions on this one. Ms. Blint? Uh, no questions. Mr. Lester? No questions, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hussain? No questions, Mr. Chair. Ms. Adams? No questions. Mr. Mara? No questions. Thank you. All right, any comment from the audience? We really don't expect any. Comments from Mr. Mara? Mr. Mara? He's gone dark. Uh, I share your gun and abandon and let it go. So I think it's a good idea. Okay, Ms. Adams? No comments. Mr. Hussain. Uh, no comments, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lester. Uh, no comments. Ms. Blint. No comments. Mr. Millett. Uh, no concerns. I have no comments. Mr. Laliberti, anything to wind up? No, I, I think we said it all. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close the public hearing. Hello. No move. Pick one, Joyce. Uh, we have a second. I'll second it. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Back on the general agenda. We have before Thanks. us a special permit, permit from Bloomfield Property Group for action on 9 Britain Drive in the I2 zone. We have a motion for approval. I'll move to approve the uh, special permit application for the Bloomfield Property Group LLC for the approval of a change in usage to allow for personal fitness slash training facility with accessory retail in a multi-tenant building. The property is located at 9 Burton Drive, unit number two in an I-2 zone, owner of the Bloomfield Group LLC, um, with, I guess, plans or email received in June 27, 2022. Uh, this, this, this approval is subject to the conformance with the reference documents and may be required to be modified the representations made on record and meet the following conditions by staff as listed in the letter dated July 24, 2022. You have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Chair votes aye. Good luck, Mr. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Good evening. Good evening. It's a new business. Good night. Thank you. We have a request from Freeman Companies on behalf of the property owner Leslie Perry for 90 day extension. Well, 183 Duncaster Road. May I interrupt, um, Chair? I'm sorry. Um, I recuse myself from the hearing. I will come back when it's done. Certainly. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I have to do the same. I didn't realize you were that close. Okay. <clears throat> so we're left with, uh, well, we're still five. Uh, is there anyone here to make this application? Hi, this is Kevin Bloomquist. Um, I'm an engineer at Freeman Companies. Um, yeah, I'm here to accept whatever's going on. <laughs> well, that was informational. <laughs> well, I, I, what, what do you need me to speak on other than um, we filed for a first request? Um, and I believe it was in February for an additional 90 days. Um, and then we required just a few extra days. It was um, our end of, of uh, our extension was due around July 4th. And we didn't wanna play with um, not being able to have staff to um, do the staking out that was required for this uh, project. So we just wanted to not play around with the timetable. We only needed a few extra days and the, all the information that was required for the uh, acceptance of the lot split was, has been submitted at this time, I do believe. 
Um, I believe Jennifer received that those um, um, printouts and mylars. Um, so that that's just where we stand now. Thank you, Jennifer. Any comment? Nope, I was just hopeful that uh, they could explain why the extension was needed and they've done that. I don't have any further comments. So make sure those get filed. Awesome, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Any comments from anyone on the commission or questions? Shouldn't be too involved. Joyce, you can go ahead. Do you have your hands raised? Uh, yeah, I just noticed that. I, I, I'm sorry. Clarification like, maybe? <laughs> his name please <laughs> oh sorry my name is kevin bloomquist i work as an, an a civil engineer at freeman companies in hartford connecticut thank you sir okay entertain a motion for approval so moved and a second. second second okay we moved in second in to grant the requested extension any discussion all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Chair votes aye. Okay. We're on to old uh, business. Thanks, guys. Have a uh, thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you, you bet. Uh, you Thank too. you, Mr. Yep. Uh, affordable housing plan discussion. Jennifer, what are we going to discuss? <laughs> Yeah, so I actually uh, do have an update. I sent out a solicitation uh, because of the amount of funding uh, RF RFP was not needed, but I did send out a solicitation to the Connecticut listserv and of planners. Um, I also sent out emails to a number of planning firms that I was aware of. We did get a response from Taiki, but unfortunately they said that they're um, too busy to meet our timeline and there might be a delay. Uh, so they decided not to respond. Um, Goldman and York did respond. And so um, they were uh, asked if they would be interested in moving forward and they've confirmed. And so um, I've now created an account for that fund so we can accept those funds from the Department of Housing and we can get started. And uh, the intention still is to complete the affordable housing plan as we also get started with the plan of conservation and development. Uh, so those will kick off around the same time and we should have a completed affordable housing plan by the fall. And the extensions have um, again been filed. The paperwork has been filed with the Department of Housing. So we are, that ball has been picked back up and we're on track again. So I expect in September, there will be a couple of uh, public workshops and maybe a hearing in October, early November. And I'll keep you posted. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions from anyone? <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think with those staff reports. Uh, no, no additional reports. Um, in about a week or so, we should be providing the community um, building leadership team reports that would go to boards, commissions, town council, um, as well as the town manager and other staff. And I'm glad to submit that at that time. Very good, sounds excellent. Yeah, nice work. Great. <clears throat> Does anyone have any comments they want to get on the record? Um, I would entertain a motion for uh, adjournment. Okay. It, it motion Katie, to adjourn. Oh. Pardon me? I thought I Katie might question. have mentioned she had something to say. Well, I think I can wait until after we um, adjourn. The meeting. Yeah, after adjournment. Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. We have a motion for adjournment. There were so many voices I didn't pick up. Anything. Michelle did. I'll second. second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.